Hello there, all you amazing peoples. You may see this up here. Uh, this finger here. <laughs> uh, AMD Radeon RX 7600. One of the cards that got not as much flash and ridicule as the 4060. And you may wonder why do I have this up here? Why did I, a uh, tech person, downgrade? to a 7600 because technically it is a downgrade. I went from a A7050 to a RX7600. And if you look at the specs over here that I have on here, it is a downgrade. The this A750 have better output, basically more output, better bandwidth, utilizing all the lanes in the PCI 4.0, I think it is 4.0, and all these things. On paper, technically, it is a better card. It should perform better. It don't. <laughs> I, I I can't be more played and honest about this. Are there games where it performs a little bit better? I've been playing around some games, yeah, but here's a newsflash for you. I can't satisfyingly play Starfield in 1440p on an A750. Even on medium 1080p and 60% upscaling, it runs like shit. I get the same frame rates having almost no upscaling, even without upscaling. Actually, I get the same frame rates without upscaling in 1440p with the same settings on this card up here. So a lesser powerful card is getting more frames in higher resolution than this up here. Or, or sorry, than the Intel 750 that is more powerful than this one up here. Other things I noticed this is that I can now watch a YouTube video and I can scroll a web page without it starting to do that kind of thing all these small little things. So why is that? It, it's really simple. It's a really simple concept when you think about it. It's software. It's firmware dri driver issues. Intel has just not managed to keep up with, of course, the maturity of the AMD software and the Intel software. Briefly, I will mention why I didn't get the 4060 or 4060 Ti. They are massively overpriced. I, I have the way that AMD as a company have conducted themselves this generation of graphic cards. I just don't want to support their way of looking at gamers. I know AMD is not much better. AMD is just as bad shit crazy. They, they were trying to oversell this 760 here, a 7600. I got it now while the price was low. I actually paid a little bit more for my for my A750 because I bought that before Intel lowered the prices also. So they cost me about the same. If not, the A750 was probably like a five to $10 more expensive. So who gives a fuck? And right now in Denmark, you can get an A750 or a 7600, depends on sales and stuff like that. They either cost the same or this one up here is a little bit more expensive. But what you are getting, the capabilities of actually playing games, the maturity of the drivers, which matters. You, all of these small irritations that you get with the, or I got with the A750, I, I almost have none of those with this one up here right now. I had to, this is one of the crazy aspect of it. I had to plug in my second screen to my onboard graphic card on my uh, CPU just to get it to work. And that was kind of what broke it for me. It, it's one of those simple things that should work with a, with a graphic card that don't work. Yes, the A750 is amazing if you find a game that's supported and they have worked on the drivers for that specific game. This one up here just worked better overall on more games out of the box. And I know a lot of people have said, because I made a video why you should not buy a, a Intel graphic card right now. They were like, oh, you first adopter and it's their first dedicated graphic card no intel has tried i think two or three times before this one here to get into the dedicated dedicated graphic card market and here's the thing you have to remember they have done graphic card drivers ever since the 90s they just started on onboard gpus and yeah they are different but they should not be that different if you get what i'm saying here like they do have some fucking expertise and and all of the all of the people say give them a chance 
don't be so critical towards them and stuff like that. Like, we have to, or else they won't fix it. And also, they don't deserve a break. Like I said, this is not their first rodeo. They have done graphic card technologies for decades on onboard graphic cards. In CPUs, yes, it's not 100% the same. But think about an iGPU, like a scaled down version of a dedicated TPU. So yes, there are some challenges with making a dedicated TPU, of course. The only reason why I don't like the, the Intel graphic cards is the software. I, I, I just can't fathom that a company way bigger than AMD, have way more money than AMD, can make good graphic card drivers. It's almost like they have not tested the drivers before they make. They make them test them on one machine and put them out. That's the feeling I get knowing a little bit about software development and stuff like that. It seems like they're focusing so heavy on gaming that they forget everything else. And you don't sit and game 24 seven on your computer. And if I had an Intel system, like say a, a, a 1300 gen or 13 gen Intel processor and stuff like that, it probably would will work better. But the graphic card driver for the onboard graphic card on that 13, 12, 11 gen Intel systems would be working better than the dedicated graphic card. I have right now an AMD 7600X. That's the CPU. It has a dedicated uh, uh, iGPU on it. And I have now the 7600 graphic card. I need one piece of software. If I wanted two pieces of software, I would probably go with Nvidia next time and, and just suck it up and let uh, Mr. Jensen uh, loop his finger up and tinkle my, you know what? It just don't make sense. I know why people want Intel to, to be supported by the user base. I know why people don't like and see this as slandering and stuff like towards Intel, because they want someone to knock the faces out of AMD and in, uh, Nvidia and the way that they are overpricing their shit and the way that they are shit giving us almost no upgrades generation by generation and amping up the price. I am one million times percent whatever you would call it with you but we should not be settling for shit just to slap someone else in the face it won't help because if you don't tell Intel that this is not good enough just like if you don't tell amd and nvidia what they're doing is bad they won't change do you think amd or sorry in nvidia is going to lower the prices when all of their fucking graphic cards go out of stock every time they release them no they won't they are like okay you're bitching and moaning over the prices of our graphic cards we are selling out every quarter well you're buying them anyway, you sucker. At least AMD is lowering them, their, their stuff a little bit. That's why I went with an AMD this time. They are not better than Nvidia when it comes to being dipshits towards the customer base. They're just not as bad. Intel is doing the right thing on the pricing, the power of the graphic cards. They are just falling, sh I was about to do this. They are falling short on the software. If we just keep buying Intel cards because, oh, let's support them. They will make, make a new one. They don't learn their lesson. It's like if someone is stealing your cookie and you're not saying anything to them or, or, or giving them any form of punishment, they will steal your cookies all the fucking time. No matter if they can afford to buy their own cookies, no matter how much money they have and how many cookies they already have, if they can get away with stealing your cookies, Cookies, they will steal your cookies. No matter if it's Intel, AMD, or Nvidia, we have to stop buying their shit if we don't agree with what they're doing. Right now, we, the, the best thing would do buy second generation uh, in, Nvidia card and second generation AMD card. My situation is that I don't game much, but I do game. I could have gotten, I was actually looking at a 6700 60, 60, XT. I was even thinking about buying a 7700 XT because I had the money to do it, to be honest. But I was a little bit like, I'm not gaming that much. Play maybe a game like an hour and two a day at most, and it's not even every day. And the games that I play, I don't need massive graphic card powers. So there's a really few games like Cyberpunk and, and now Starfield that require some oomph, but I, I'm, I'm satisfied with the way that they perform on, on this graphic card here. And actually, Cyberpunk played quite well on my 750. My A750 was actually a really good card, card, card that was some Danish for you there. It was a really good card for my uh, Cyberpunk experience. This one is just a little bit better, but it was playable. It was good enough. I was happy playing Cyberpunk on my A750. So I was like, I could spend a shit ton of money on a graphic card, but I, I, I just can't 
justified because I don't game that much. If you game much, yes, buy a 6080 or uh, 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 yes, 6800 6, XT, 6700 XT, you'll get it will be way better for you and stuff like that. But this here is still more more uh, cheaper than those, those are. At least the one I got here, I saved about twenty dollars getting this one over a 6700 XT because again here in Denmark we it's pricing in EU, especially in in Denmark and Norway and Sweden and Scandinavia because we have taxes put into it, sales taxes and all that fucking shit. The pricing gets a little bit weird because it's not a fixed thing that they put on it. It's percentage of of the of the of the uh, MSIP or the percentage of what the the uh, co uh, not customer but the um, shops are selling it for. It's not just a fixed um, let's say twenty dollars fixed tax. No, it's percentage of everything. So if it goes up with like ten dollars, they it's, it's it's still. 25% of those $10 they put on top of it. So the more expensive the card get, 25% of $10 is nothing. 25%, 24% of $2,000 is way more. You get what I'm saying here? The cards are not that close to each other as they are in the States and stuff like that. Funny enough, this one up here and the 4060 uh, 40, non-TI is about, the, the 4060 TI is about what you get a 67 6700 XT for. And if you go up to uh, you want like a 6800 that's about what a Nvidia 460 Ti cost. If you want a 7700 that's between a 460 Ti to a 470 or 4070. That that's how the price is in Denmark. And I know and I know if you think about if you look at a, especially in the states like that's that's not even close to how they they compare with each other over here. That's why. That's because we have sales taxes. In my case for my computing needs, gaming needs, this makes sense. It don't make sense that I buy what I actually can afford that's a way, way higher high-end card when I'm not utilizing it that much. It will not help me productivity wise, it will not help me with, with um, rendering and stuff like that because the software I use is heavily CPU based. It was actually way more beneficial for me to upgrade to like a Ryzen 9 series or Ryzen 7 series CPU than actually getting a new graphic card because it's heavily CPU bound. The graphic cards only do a little bit of transition and stuff like that and not that much. It was a, if I was using, let's say, Premiere Pro, now we're talking more graphic card bound. So you also have to think about these kind of things. And that's why for a lot of people, they, they think that one, one cloth fits all. That, that's not the case. When when you when people are upgrading or downgrading, they could actually get an upgrade by downgrading because you have to understand how their use case is. So funny enough, for the way that I'm using my computer, the games I play, the creativity apps I use, the productivity apps I use, getting a lesser powerful, physical powerful card is actually an upgrade for me because it gives me more stability. I can actually play more games. I have less issues and it performs in some productivity apps Better. That's a funny thing that I'm technically downgrading hardware to upgrade and a lot of people seem to not grasp this this, this thing and that's because what I do with my computer may not be what you are doing with my, your computer. Some of the software that I have installed may be the reason why the Intel card is acting a little bit up. Like I said, it could be because I have an AMD system. Maybe Intel and AMD don't speak that well to each other. If you are having an Intel uh, CPU, Intel motherboard, you know, Intel chipset motherboard, of course, and an Arc. Uh, GPU, you may have a way better experience than I have. I'm not downing that one second whatsoever. I'm not even saying that that would be a lie if you're telling me that, because it could definitely be the case. And it makes sense that it's all Intel. They, you know, Intel know better, their chipsets better, Intel know their CPUs better. So I will not doubt one second that if you're like, what is this idiot talking about? I don't have any of these issues. Then ask yourself, do you want an Intel whole, is, is your system an Intel system? Or is it an AMD system with an Intel card in it? If it's an Intel system, it makes sense. It makes logical sense that that card will work better for you. Just as it would make logical sense that I am an AMD system with an Intel card in it, that I probably have more issues than you have. It's all of these things we have to ask ourselves and think about when we are talking about, oh, why are you, you know, yakking on, on in Intel and why are you critical about Intel and stuff like that? Because they don't work well with my system. And I'm not the only one out here having issues. If not to talk about being able to fucking use my control center, the Intel control center don't work here. Adrenaline software. Huh? Oh, you have a FreeSync monitor. I forgot I had a FreeSync monitor. It was just automatically enabled. Apparently, Intel supports FreeSync. Not been able to use it on my monitor. It's it's not 
that the Intel card was a bad gaming card. Because for the games that it won on, it ran amazing for what it is. And for a first gen graphic card. The issue is when it didn't work. And the issue is all of the other small paper cards. If this is how Intel is going to do anything that has to do with software with their uh, dedicated graphic cards, making a downgrade will seem like an upgrade for you. And that will mean there's no fucking reason to buy Intel graphic cards. Why do you think content creators almost never, or, or tech YouTubers almost never talk about Intel cards? Why do you think even with the overpricing and bad shit crazy launches as with AMD and Nvidia lately, that they almost never mention or recommend the Intel cards. It's not because they are amazingly good because then they will mention them. It's probably because they're not worth recommending. But because of software, I can downgrade my graphic card and get a, a fucking upgrade. A downgrade is an upgrade for me. Have an amazing day. Bye bye.